This video is made possible by North Naperville Autos. If you're looking for a quality used car in the Chicagoland area, North Naperville Autos is here to help. Browse their inventory at NorthNaperVilleAutos.com and drive home in a new vehicle today. All right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2004 Infiniti G35. Up front is a 3.5 liter V6 and down below is a five speed automatic transmission. Now I'm super excited to be driving this here G35 for two main reasons. First of all, this particular car only has 44,000 miles on it, which is pretty low mileage given the year and what kind of vehicle it is. Speaking of which, my second reason is the fact that these cars are starting to get their second lease on life, where they were originally a business coupe, a luxury coupe that someone who worked in a corporate office would spend their bonus on is now a vehicle that kids tend to mess with. So we'll talk about that in the final thoughts segment. But let's get back to that VQ35 engine under the hood. I'll put the horsepower and torque up on the screen. It makes a decent amount of horsepower and torque. I've always liked the VQ35. Some people tend to not really like them, but I've always thought that they were decent and they pack a good enough punch for what they are. Not bad, not bad I say, not bad. Like I said, paired to it, five speed automatic. Now these cars were offered in a six speed manual and those are more desirable for sure, but the automatic is okay. It is shifting fine, it's doing its business, but I'm not really too happy with it. It's not at all sporty, which I really wish that it was at least a little bit more sporty because this really is a 350Z in a tuxedo, but I guess beggars can't be choosers. Last but not least, of course, the G35 is rear wheel drive. So let's talk about the interior. We have a couple interesting things to talk about in here. Well, in front of me, I have four main gauges. On the left is my fuel and my speedometer, and on the right is my tachometer and my coolant temperature. They are finished in the traditional Nissan orange. Everything Nissan did from 2000 pretty much up till this year, their electronics were and or are orange. And that's the same story here with these gauges. They really remind me of like 80s Toyota gauges. I don't know why. On the steering wheel on the left, I have my volume, mode, and power button. And on the right, I have my cruise control options. I like the steering wheel. This actually feels decently modern. Modern enough to be acceptable for a 17-year-old car. It is leather wrapped and I like that. Nice, clean, and simple, nothing more to it. To the left of me, I have some vents, and on the door, I have my window switches and power locks. Moving into the center, I do have a little display screen giving me like my compass, outside temperature, things like that. I like this, however, it's up on the dash. I don't really care all that much. It's up and out of the way, and I doubt I would find myself looking at this readout too frequently. Moving down below, that's something I really like is the clock. I get an analog clock. Infinity is very good about doing this. They gave me an analog clock for the dash. I like this because you don't find this in Corollas, you don't find this in Honda Civics, you don't find this in base model cars. This is a premium vehicle option. And so when I see an analog clock in a car, it makes me feel a little bit special. Down below that, you get this little push button thing. And at first I had no idea what this was until I pushed it and found that an entire screen came up with it. This is your navigation screen. Now this is not your media. Your media is ran down below. This is just for navigation, which is really, really cool that it pops out of the dash and when you're not using it, it's so clean and simple when it's closed that I didn't even notice that it had it, which was fantastic. It is very rudimentary. It's a very old Nissan system, but again, this is a 17 year old system. So keep that in mind. Very cool that it even has that. Then I have my buttons for that GPS, voice, route, setting, info, map, and destination, cancel, in, out, previous, and then I have my little joystick for that screen. This is the only issue I have with the screen is that little joystick. It's hard to use while driving, especially if you're trying to adjust your navigation point or something of the sort. It's so little that your finger kind of goes all over the place and it's just not great. Then I have my climate control options, nothing really too interesting here. I do have auto, which is nice, power. 
And then I have my radio. So I do have a cassette player as well as a CD player. And I have my favorite stations, volume up and down. The stereo system is all right. It's not amazing. However, it functions still here 17 years later. So I guess I can't really knock it too hard. Then I have an ashtray with the hazard switch off to the right. Also off to the right of the radio, I just noticed there's a little 12 volt outlet. So mainly for the passenger or for a radar detector, but really nice that you get one. And then I have the shifter itself. I really love this center stack. I think the center stack is very, very presentable and looks very good. And that includes the shifter. I think the shifter looks good. Yes, it's an automatic and I'm sure there's some 15 year old kid that's like, ugh, automatic. Yes, it's an automatic, but I think the shifter itself looks nice. And down below that, I do have my heated seat options. Below the heated seat options, I have a openable cup holder, rather slow, but openable nevertheless. And so we will do a big friggin' bottle test here in the Infinity G35, and it fails. It is too thin to fit the big friggin' bottle, unfortunately. However, I didn't really expect it to. Like I said, this is sort of a sports coupe, which I don't know of any sports coupes that actually pass the big friggin' bottle test. <laughs> Before we get on with the rest of the review, I wanna give a huge thank you to Fixed. Fixed is a Bluetooth OBD2 sensor for your car. You can plug it into any OBD2 vehicle, which is a vehicle manufactured after 1996, and you can take a look at your gauges, you can keep an eye on your temperature, you can see your speed, you can time your zero to 60. There's tons of really cool features that will pair directly to your smartphone, and it gives you great insight on your vehicles. Fixed is giving my viewers a hefty discount, so click the link in the description below, get your own Fixed OBD2 to Bluetooth sensor and start learning more about your car. Then I have a center console and armrest, some coin holders and a 12 volt outlet in the center console. Now the seats are really comfortable. These are very, very sporty. They have high bolsters. They really hold you in, but they're comfortable and they're light. And I really, really do enjoy them. Also something I wanted to point out, the seat controls are like up against the center console for both seats, which is just very odd. Normally they're down here. However, speaking of seats, let's go do a backseat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 2004 Infiniti G35 Coupe. Um, these seats are not good. My head is hitting the rear window. I do have fold out cup holders down here. I have this little center tray. So this is a two plus two. And there is no third seat back here, thank God. I have a little ashtray here. These are if you need them seats. I would not recommend putting anyone you relatively like back here because they will not like you uh, after a very short drive. Like I said, I'm 5'11". My head is bashed into the rear window. I don't really get many amenities back here. And right now it is a hot sauna in here. So I'm not gonna stay back here too long. Let's go take a look at the trunk. All right, so we're on the back of the G35. Pop the trunk here. Of course, floor mats, not as deep of a trunk as what I would have thought. But I do get a cool little drawing there. That's actually a G35 Coupes, which is nice. Infinity kit here. But yeah, very, very uh, short trunk, not very deep. It goes deep that way, but not down, um, which is very interesting. So don't expect to fit a lot of tall stuff in here. Not very practical of a car. With the bad back seats and the trunk space, this is not very practical if it's more than just you. Now we gotta talk about the looks, and I prefer the sedan when it comes to G35s. Yes, there is a sedan version of the G35, and this is not it. I think the back end of the coupes look a little funky, and I'm just not a big coupe fan overall. There's very few coupes that I like. I usually opt for the sedan versions of cars. However, I like how subtle the car is. I like how stock the car is. I think stock body is good body, and overall, no complaints. So let's talk about my final thoughts on the G35. This is my first G35. And yes, I have been offered a few G35s to film before. Shout out to Tom, I'll get to yours eventually. But something I really want to talk about is the popularity that these cars are gaining in recent years, mainly due to the drift community and prices. These cars, much like their 350Z counterparts, are very good at drifting and for motorsport events. They have enough power to get them moving, they're fun to drive, and overall, they're pretty good starter cars. Pair that with this car being 17 years old, you can find these for very, very reasonable pricing right now. Will it stay that way? Mm, I don't know. But right now, you can find these for pretty reasonable prices, which makes this very, very enticing. Because for that low price, 
You get a V6, you get rear wheel drive, you can have a six speed manual, you can have a coupe, it's sporty, it's fun, and it's really torquey. And so I understand why. These cars are great platforms. And now is their time to shine. They're in the sweet spot of powerful and affordable, which is a dangerous spot to be in when you're a car enthusiast. Now, yes, this one is automatic, but I'd highly recommend searching out a manual. The manuals are a lot better, a lot more fun to drive and a lot more engaging. And if you do plan on doing motorsport things with it, a manual is always better. It's going to be really interesting to watch what happens with the G35s, because right now it's already hard to find one in good condition. And speak of the devil, that's a 350Z. So get them while they're hot. If you're someone who's just getting their license and they want to get into cars, this is a very good option. Tons of parts are available. Right now they're easy to find and cheap enough to find. They're reliable. What more do you need? And you can get your hands on them very easily right now. Right now, that's the biggest thing is right now you can get them. I don't know about the future. These might start to get rare, especially with all the modification and well, drifting them into poles and such. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to North Naperville Autos for letting me take out their used vehicle. This is one of the cars on their lot. Their information is up on the screen as well as linked in the description below. They are a Carfax certified dealership as well as they do offer financing. So if you wanna drive home in this G35, there isn't much stopping you. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.